the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cardinals, your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, rise up, Red Sea. It's a Monday edition, the Locked On Cardinals podcast. We're your hosts, Bo Brock, Alex Clancy, no longer looking like he's broadcasting from a foggy shower anymore. <laughs> Looks like he's got crystal clear video, and uh, we're excited to be with you. The couple days after the red-white scrimmage, we'll get some takeaways from that scrimmage. Um, probably not the best outing from your franchise quarterback. Is it time to maybe... Hover that hand over the panic button, or should we just pump the brakes on our hot takes as far as that's concerned? But there was, at least for me, one big takeaway from the red-white scrimmage, which was missing a couple of the key players that were expecting to make a big impact on the 2021 Arizona Cardinals roster. Uh, coming up also on today's episode, we're going to congratulate Edrin James. It was nice to see an Arizona Cardinal partake in the uh, induction ceremonies out there at the Pro Football Hall of Fame that had not one but two Hall of Fame classes enshrined over the weekend, including the Edge. And of course, uh, maybe there could be another Arizona Cardinal, former Arizona Cardinal, enshrined as early as 2022. We'll tell you who that is. And the Arizona Cardinals add depth to the running back room. Um, man, it's uh, th- we're not short on content. And guess what, Alex? The Arizona Cardinals play football this week. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> they play Friday. They take on the Dallas Cowboys. They open up their exhibition slate, one of three games at State Farm Stadium. And uh, it's going to be Friday night at 7. I cannot wait for that. We actually just get to watch. Starting Thursday night, you get you know a couple games, a game, couple games Friday night with the Arizona Cardinals being the nightcap. And then you get a full slate on Saturday and then one game on Sunday. I'm, I'm here for all of it. Uh, this episode, it's brought to you by Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock, former NFL scout Matt Williamson, host Lockdowns Peacock and Williamson every Monday through Friday. I'll give you the national perspective all around the NFL, covering the latest news and insight on every game, team, and move around the league. Get your picks, previews, and much more every weekday with Peacock and Williamson's podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Locked on Cardinals, part of your Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Alex, uh, Let's just get into this red-white scrimmage. Uh, you were telling me what you kind of had some concerns. On it's how not things concerns. Would I mean, like Rondo Moore has been balling out, right? Um, Kyler Murray is responsible for that. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins has kind of been removed recently. Christian Kirk, same. AJ Green's flash. So obviously, anytime the wide receiver flashes, it's partially because of the quarterback. But we've seen a couple videos of some not so great passes from Kyler Murray. Like the one, uh, Jess Root had it up on Cards Wire, a little clip from Twitter where he threw an out. I, I didn't, I didn't notice who the receiver was because Darquez Denard may as well have been the receiver because he was closest to the ball. Uh, Would have taken it back to the house if it were an actual NFL game. Um, intermediate passes, Bo. Is there a chance? Now I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not saying that I'm wrong here yet. But is there a chance that it's not the play calling and that Kyler Murray really does have trouble throwing an intermediate ball? No, I, I I don't have any. You know, this was a bad throw. This was a bad throw early in camp. You know, I'm I'm not concerned about it. You know, it, it looked like we were watching the Detroit Lions game from last year where he threw three <laughs> picks. Yeah, it was Darquez Denard who was uh, the one that took it back. And um, but at the same time, I'm not I'm not hovering my my hand over the panic button just yet. Um, you know, it, 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 you know, what I'm more concerned about, I mean, you didn't have JJ Watt, you didn't have Jordan Phillips, you didn't have Zach Allen, you didn't have Corey Peters, you didn't have, uh, Rondell Moore, you didn't have AJ Green, you didn't have Chris Banjo. I mean, it, it was, it's so, so many of these minor nagging injuries. Uh, it was pretty, uh, anticlimactic as far as this return to the nest on, on, on Saturday. Um, I look, Kyler Murray's thrown 24 picks in two seasons. He's thrown 12 in each of his first and second season in the NFL. I've never been concerned with uh, his inability to take care of the football. He set a rookie record, for God's sake, in his first season for consecutive passes without an interception. I think he went, what, 210 without throwing a pick? I think he he does a good job taking care of the football. Yeah, look, it was it an intermediate pass? Absolutely. Was that uh, is that the main uh, thing that we want to see him, you know, take a step in the right direction this year? Absolutely. 
but I'm not sitting here and saying, okay, well, time to start looking elsewhere for your franchise quarterback. And I know that you're not saying that either, but um, it, there wasn't a big time encouraging sign. Uh, and I and I hope that this comes to fruition from the red white scrimmage. Th- there's this starting right guard position that remains open, and it's a trio of guys competing for the spot. There's Brian Winters, who was signed from the Buffalo Bills this past offseason, who's banged up. And then you've got, uh, of course, uh, the old steady Justin Murray, who Steve Keim luckily plucked from the trash heap a couple uh, the free agent waiver wires a couple seasons ago, and he's been solid for this organization. And then there's the former third-round pick, 72nd overall, Josh Jones, who was drafted as a tackle and has played left tackle basically his entire life. But I would love to see Josh Jones just take hold of this opportunity because it would not only sh- you know really, really – clean up last year's draft class, which was kind of fell by the wayside with Isaiah Simmons getting 35% of the snaps. If Isaiah Simmons takes a step and we see more of Josh Jones and he can potentially start at the right guard position, that draft class looks a lot better. There's still a lot of ifs. Like I feel, I feel we find ourselves saying if this happens, then this there, there aren't many surefire players. You can trust 100% implicitly on this roster, right? I mean, yeah, Buda, can. DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Chandler Jones, J.J. Watt will bring something from both sides. You know, um, uh, it's just there well, aren't you think many. There are more question marks than you know across the division. I mean, this the, just think about you know it's top heavy, right? But you know, I you can rely upon Kyler Murray. I'm not con- like I said. I'm not concerned about the t- the picks. This is a guy that can had you- 37 touchdowns last year can, right right sure but can you rely on kyler murray like you can russell wilson can you rely I mean, on Mur- kyle murray they're, just let's just i'm just I, i'm going good. hold on I, i'm can you rely on kyler murray like you well i guess that's dumb can you rely on kyler murray like you can rely on matthew stafford slash sean McVay? so if we're what talking division mm-hmm. can you rely on kyler Moore? I, I, yes. There's not a there's not a direct yes there. His numbers are going to be there. Are they going to equate to wins? That's the question. When you have when you have surefire players you can trust, okay? Which you're right. Top heavy. Most NFL teams are top heavy. But if you have them in the right spots, it just means a little bit more. Like when we say I if, really the entire problem. linebacking crew is an if. The entire sure. cornerback room is an if. And then you have and that, like, it, this isn't fair. It's just true. Like, Rodney Hudson, DJ Humphreys, trust Kelvin Beach on probably the inside. There's still question marks, as you just mentioned. If Josh Jones works, it'll be great. If AJ Green, if Christian Kirk, if Rondo Moore, the only one is is DeAndre Hopkins. So I just, I'm just acknowledging the fact that we're we saying if a lot, hoping we need a. We need. It's a good thing that the first preseason game is just a couple of days away. Please, damn it! it. You're, you're you're getting yourself into a, a panic, a, a frenzy right now that I don't think is necessary because I think if you're looking for like proven commodities, I think you'd be hard pressed as far as the NFC West is concerned to find a, a team with more proven commodities than the Arizona Cardinals. It's the guys that are behind them on the depth chart that that offer more question marks. But like like you said. Rondell, I mean, sorry, Rodney Hudson, DJ Humphreys, Kyler Murray. You have, uh, you know, and that's and DeAndre Hopkins on the offensive side of the football. On the defensive side, J.J. Watt, Chandler Jones. Uh, I think you could say Corey Peters has been reliable when he's healthy. Uh, you've got Buda Baker. You've got Malcolm Butler. I think that they're, you, you'd be hard-pressed to go across the NFC West and find more guys with, uh, you know, name recognition and, and that have proven to be NFL caliber starters across the division. I mean, I, mean, I, see, the, I, I see it, but JJ Watt, we don't know. We, we don't know. We think, I know. but we don't know. I know. When was the last time you saw it? I saw, I mean, he, last year he made an absolute, he, he made, it was a nightmare for opposing offenses. I know he only had five and a half sacks, but I mean, he's facing double, triple teams. Uh, he's still batting balls down. I, I look, I'm, 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 if I'm going to concern myself with somebody in this roster, there are a lot more people in front of J.J. Watt that I'm going to be concerned about. I, I just think that he's a guy that, he, I mean, outside of obviously having being riddled by injuries for a couple of seasons, not last season, but 
during his career. Sure, that's something that has you concerned in his age. But no, I'm not. I'm not. It, you shouldn't be any more concerned than the other fan or talking head for the other 31 franchises. Yeah, that's fair. And I, I'm not saying that I do think what I'm saying. You know, I'm just asking. Like, are you sure? You know, like, like with with DK Metcalf, Russell Wilson, Bobby Wagner. You're sure. You're sure that that's going to work. You are 100 percent certain, barring injury, that those three 17 weeks this year will be problems for opposing teams. You know that for a fact because you've seen it time and time again. And DK Metcalf is in there now, right? I mean, you put him in there. That's all I'm saying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to just. And Buda Baker, you know, is going to be there. Kyler Murray, sure, is going to be there. DeAndre Hopkins. That's the three, and maybe Rodney Hudson. But if you put Seattle versus the Cardinals right now with coaching staff and roster out of 10 games how many wins do you give the cardinals like that's the perspective i'm trying to like wrap my head around as we get into preseason yeah i mean the arizona cardinals cliff kingsbury the coaching staff you know two and two against the seattle seahawks mm -hmm. since since taking over the reins in 2019 and you know they actually have had some success the only team they haven't had any success against has been the la rams they haven't beaten the la rams in a long long time i think since Barack Obama was president. That that was a long time ago. So, you know, the Arizona Cardinals are going to have to figure out a way, especially Cliff Kingsbury and Vance Joseph, to, to beat Sean McVay. I will say this, and I may bring this up the next time, they, they the first time they face the Rams in 2019, you got to look at how what Brian Flores has done the last two times against Sean McVay offenses. He's been masterful. And if Vance Joseph isn't taking away from those performances last year with the Dolphins, and then, of course, the Super Bowl when he was part of the defensive coordinator, the defensive brain trust, the Patriots, uh, you know, I, I don't know what you're doing as a, as a head coach, but uh, it's the Lockdown Cardinals podcast, part of your Lockdown Podcast Network. Bo Brock, Alex Clancy, follow along on Twitter at Lockdown AZ Cards. Thank you for everybody subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's been, it's been unreal. I mean, like, just you guys are subscribing in droves, and if you haven't done so, please do so. Like our videos. Tell us, you know, we're in the chat. We're talking with you guys each and every day, each and every post of the show. Uh, it, it's fun just talking Cardinals football. They do take the practice field today at 1.30 in Glendale. Uh, we'll see what the latest is as far as the injury report and who's getting reps and, and what's going on. I will say this. The Arizona Cardinals have been innovative. They've announced a big gambling partnership. We, we'll give you the details on that. And also we'll throw out a big congratulations to a recent Arizona Cardinal that got inducted into the, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It's all coming up on this edition of Locked On Cardinals, part of your Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we've got our brand new sponsor joining us. This one, uh, we've got a stat hero. Did you know that 85% Alex of people who play daily fantasy are big fat losers, 85%. <laughs> you know, the reason for that is because the game's rigged against you. You're playing that's against great thousands. copy. Can we just say that's <laughs> great copy right there? That's, that is, I might, I might have ad libbed, but look, <laughs> I mean, you're going against a thousand people in these, in these DFSs where Stat Hero fixes it for you. You just, it's one versus one. That's how you do it. Introducing Stat Hero, the first ever daily fantasy sports book that puts the player in control of and winning within reach. Here's how it works. Stat Hero shows you their lineups and dares you to beat them. It's you versus the house. It's blackjack. It's one-on-one -on -one without people taking your cards. You name the stakes. Winner take all. You have the advantage. Stat Hero is showing you their lineups. No one else does that. Go to stathero.com slash locked on. Sign up for free. And right now, you can get three times back on your first play. You're giving. They're giving you 300% match. It's unheard of. Go to stathero.com slash locked on. Stathero.com slash locked on. So the Arizona Cardinals, they announced today their gambling partnership. They're leading the way for sports gambling in the NFL. And uh, sports gambling, not right now, legal in the state of Arizona. But the expectation is by week one of the NFL season that it will be. And the Arizona Cardinals are anticipating that. The uh, sportsbook operator BetMGM announced their partnership today with the Arizona Cardinals, Gila River Hotels and Casinos, that will give the company access to the state's online sports betting market, which is scheduled to launch by the start of the season. The partnership includes building a retail sportsbook at State Farm Stadium in Glendale. And also, the Cardinals are the first NFL team to announce the plans to add a retail sportsbook which is slated to open just before the 2022 season. So you won't have it this year, but my God, how exciting <laughs> is that? I mean, Westgate's going to turn into a mini Vegas 
for eight months a year. Like that. Imagine the expansion around Westgate that this is going to not even just the sports book. Like it's never really about like, sure. You know, you go bet on sports, sports book. Cool. It's coming to Arizona. Fantastic. The excitement's going to wear off. The honeymoon phase is going to wear off. It's just going to be a thing. And then hotels, restaurants like Westgate is already packed, but sweet mother. What betting is going to be able going to do for the economy in Arizona is insane. It's it's unfathomable at this point because we never yeah. really thought it was going to happen. At least when I other mean, states, we thought it was going to be the last state in the union to do it. Yeah, I mean, you and I we're guys that we we chase action all the time. We're on BetOnline.ag all the time, throwing down, getting on, on spreads. I won't even tell the dirty little secret to how what you're betting on these days. Like you're an absolute just delinquent, but and you're successful at it. But when you and I go to Vegas. I don't know if you're like me, but I'm just plopping my butt down in that sports book and I'm just th- getting in on all the games I can. And I'm, if you go for an NFL Sunday, like that's that's an, a, that's just a beautiful day for me. Sitting in a sports book, watching all the games on TV, having action on basically every game, rooting, you know, you're rooting with fellow batters on the game. That's what's kind of, uh, that's what's coming to Glendale and it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be. I don't even like. You can't. It's and hard to wrap your head around it. The level, you got You have to give them kind of a, a pat on the back. Like good for yeah. them for getting in. I mean, that's that's just great. It's innovative and it's and it's it's unbelievably smart. Michael Bidwell and crew getting in on this one. I want to give a big uh, congratulations, and this kind of goes along with the conversation about Michael Bidwell. Uh, he kind of took over the reins as far as you know. Calling the shots as far as the Cardinals organization he took him over from his late father, Bill Bidwell. And, uh, you know, I th- one of the biggest moves that they made that kind of changed the way this franchise was perceived and the narrative around the franchise outside of University of Phoenix Stadium opening up in Glendale was the signing of Edger and James. Because it was Edger and James coming over in his prime from the Indianapolis Colts, signing a major, uh, a, a major deal. The money was absolutely there. But it wasn't a money grab like Emmett Smith at the end of his career. It was Edger and James coming here wanting to continue his career and make big bucks. He had back-to-back thousand-yard uh, rushing seasons, and now he's wearing a gold jacket. And he got his bust unveiled over the weekend in, at the Hall of Fame. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's it's people think that you know he didn't produce here when he was here. You're right. I mean, that's just. I mean, look at his numbers. I mean, he did yeah. not let up. And one of the best quotes. I mean, I think Isaac Bruce had the best quote from over the weekend talking about the person, the unnamed person that called him two weeks before the draft, saying that no, the NFL wasn't looking at him. And he said, how you like me now, which is great. And that's always a great sign of how, how you like me now. Um, <laughs> Edron James saying, I started my career in gold teeth and now I'm wearing a gold jacket. Pretty right. solid. Yeah, yeah don't, pretty don't, badass. Don't, so good for right, him. Happy right, for him. Absolutely. I do want to get a little hot takey here. Are you ready for this? In 2022, because we, we enshrined two – Two classes this past week due to the pandemic, 2020 yeah. and 2021. 2022, we'll find out right around Super Bowl time, I believe, the next class. And you've got a trio of wide receivers that could be inducted. And, and nowadays it's tough because the numbers are so inflated with, with the big passing numbers now. But here are your three wide receivers, and you got to pick one, okay? Because you can't, you can't enshrine them all. You've got Anquan Bolden, former Cardinal, former Niner, former Raven. You've got Andre Johnson. And then you've got Steve Smith. I mean, who do you pick out of that crew? And I think that there's a case for Anquan Bolden over all three. Yeah. I mean, I get it. Um, He was the... He was never his biggest star when Larry Fitzgerald's come because Larry Fitzgerald had the top five pedigree. But, I mean, you could argue that Anquan Bolden was equal to or it's sometimes a better receiver. I mean, he just... He was a bulldog. Like he, yeah. he's, he's just a completely different guy. I mean, going across the middle, running over corners, running over safeties, the dude was an absolute machine. Like Larry Fitzgerald, obviously big and strong, but just in a, he used to outrun people. You know, he yeah. used to break tackles. Anquan Bolden used to break people, you know? <laughs> like, and when he went to Baltimore, he resurrected his career, not resurrected. I mean, he continued his all pro career there. I feel like Steve Smith is going to be the odd man out because he never really was there. He was uh, he was the the wide receiver one on a bad team in Carolina for a while. Um, he's what gives him the credit is he's the biggest dog out of all three. You yeah. know, like and he was five what five ten. He ate Patrick Peterson for lunch. I remember that. 
uh, Patrick Peterson's uh, rookie game. It was because it was Cam and him, right? So that was Patrick Peterson's first game. I remember at State Farm Stadium. Steve Smith just ate him for lunch. Um, but Andre yeah, Johnson's Cam, always Cam been my guy. A rookie record. Yeah, Cam threw for a rookie record in his first game against the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. Uh, was it was at a 2011. Yeah. And um, yeah, that was a huge draft class that included J.J. Watt and Patrick Peterson. Cam was number one in that class. But you're right. Uh, you know, as far as Steve Smith, I think he is the third one. And it's probably, Andre, I think Andre Johnson will probably get the edge just because of name recognition. Uh, he so never good, won. Man. He just it never won. That was the DeAndre Hopkins path. I was talking with with Wig from Locked on Jaguars on Twitter today about it. Like, yeah. if DeAndre Hopkins didn't leave Houston and they didn't make an AFC championship game, he would have gotten the same national notoriety as Andre Johnson did, which wasn't enough. And sure, he went to where'd he go to Indy afterwards, Andre Johnson to finish his career yeah. to limp it to the to the finish line. It's crazy that DeAndre Hopkins pedigree has risen since coming to Arizona. I mean, the the um the Hale Murray didn't didn't hurt. The right. the correct answer probably should be Anquan, but the actual answer is probably gonna be Andre Johnson. He he was always my guy, and he had Matt Schaub throwing him the ball. I know. You know? Who's still in Matt the league, by the way? Matt Schaub, uh, Joe Flacco, and uh, oh, I'm sorry, I, I was I switching up. Anquan Bolden had, uh, you know, Kurt Warner. He was part of that trio that had thousand yards each. Steve Bredesen, yep, obviously, Bredston. Larry and and Q, uh, Quan. I mean, it was he. And before Larry Fitzgerald came it to the Cardinals, he was setting a rookie record for receiving yards. And Anquan Bolden did as a as a second round pick out of Florida State, a guy that was playing the quarterback position and uh, just had an incredible career. Forgot that he played for the Lions, and there was another random team that that Quan played for at the end of his career that that's escaping me. But uh, just an incredible career. It's going to be tough for the Hall of Fame uh, voters, the 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 selection committee, to decide on those three receivers. I, I could see two of them making making it, but uh, but we'll see. Uh, but it see, was a great class. Yeah. The last thing is, I mean, Steve Smith works for NFL Network, right? So it's I, yeah. I wonder I wonder how much credence that'll hold. Just in general, because he's been around, he's with the family, you know, the whole thing. He should get in. All three should get in. Like, let's not be yeah. crazy here, I'll right? Be curious, I'll be curious to see who goes to bat for Quan because if it's if it's Ben, if he's represented by, you know, because it, usually it's a writer that covered them during their career. And it, during the Super Bowl week, those writers convene or media members, and then they'll make their case for that player and then they vote on it. And I know Kent Summers has, has done it a lot for uh, a couple different players. Uh, I don't know if 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 Anquan Bolton's going to be represented by you know a Ravens writer. I don't know if it's going to be a Cardinals media member or if it's going to be uh, a Niners media member. But uh, it'd be interesting to see. You know, I think he's going to get in no ba- no matter what. Is it going to be a first ballot guy? That remains to be seen. All right, the Arizona Cardinals they uh, added some depth to the running back room. We'll tell you who they signed over the weekend. And uh, I, I don't know if Alex likes the signing. We'll get into that. It's Locked On Cardinals, part of your Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I got to tell you about the best tasting protein bar ever. Unbelievable. The Built Bar. Nine delicious flavors. Coconut, coconut almond, cherry, raspberry, mint brownie, peanut butter brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel. And for a limited time, you can still get that orange. You can still get that strawberry. And you're not cutting any corners as far as health is concerned. 17 grams of protein, only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and 4 grams of net carbs. You can go to the website right now, built.com. Save yourself 15% on Built Bar, off Built Bar, and uh, just by using the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com on Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar on the market. Alex, full swing. That's what the preseason goes into this week. You've got a full slate of games that you can get some action on. <sighs> do, you, do people bet on preseason games? Yeah, betonline.ag. That's where you I'm can go for the easiest way to bet on preseason game. That's that's how you build your stack. And right now, they've got a sign-up bonus to where when you sign up, you get 50% on top of what you deposit. So if you put in 100 bucks, you get fifty free dollars It's not even yours, but it can become yours just by winning bets. It's free money. Go to betonline.ag. Use the promo code locked on, and you'll get that sign-up bonus, and you can start to build that stack for the regular season. Bet online. Your online sports book experts. All right. 
Wrapping up, Monday edition, Locked On Cardinals, part of your Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for watching on YouTube. Thank you for listening to us on the podcast. Our numbers have never been bigger and better, and it's all to you guys, you guys and gals out there listening to the show and follow along on Twitter at Locked On AZ Cards. Hey, did you see, I, so I had a tweet kind of go off on Friday. I yeah. compared, I compared uh, Josh Allen's numbers through two seasons to Kyler Murray's, and Kyler Murray's agent, Quote tweeted my tweet oh. with the uh, sunglasses emoji. So he seems like he's pretty happy with Josh Allen getting a $258 million extension with $150 million guaranteed. That's so, awesome. Yeah, I saw it go yeah. up. That was that was a good uh, it's a good run. You know, it's actually when you take things from other people and you tweet them, it's a lot better than when you tweet stuff yourself like that you think, which is nice. <laughs> I, I think that's one of the most backhanded compliments I've ever heard in my entire life. But uh, so you let's mix it up, bro. Yeah, I think we're going to get into a little debate. It's it's setting a good tone. It's the Arizona Cardinals signed former Atlanta Falcons running back Ito Smith to a one year deal, adding some depth. Uh, you know, I don't know what the status is of John James Connor. Is he still doing with the turf turf tour toe? I don't know. But uh, they bring in Ito Smith and in. Every time I think you probably see a free agent running back sign and it's not Todd Gurley, you get upset. I mean, it's just why would you bring in his why would you bring in his backup? Ask him if he wants to play football. Like yeah. I don't I don't think it's never been an ego thing with Todd Gurley. It's been an injury thing, you know? And they gave him a lot of money for time performed before they made it to a Super Bowl run, and then you know, his knee uh was you know degenerative degenerative knee is that right yeah if he has, um, yeah, if he has a degenerative knee that's no yeah, good yeah um i think that i would be much more inclined to trust this running back room in some capacity if todd Gurley was in there and not ito smith we we've seen and you have your fantasy football people that when either over the years when running backs have gotten hurt he's been with them for a couple of years right um atlanta that yeah. Edo Smith is like a flyer uh, that that you'd take. He'd always be in the 30s in the fantasy football rankings in in, in a, you know any given week. He might get you a touchdown or something. Um, okay, I, I don't much ado about nothing on my end. Yeah, it's um, I it's a curious move because he's not a change of pace guy for Chase Edmonds. He's smaller than Chase Edmonds. Uh, I I don't know what role they want him to play probably just did they just sign him strictly for his ability to return punts or kicks maybe that's it maybe he won't even vie for kind of reps as far as the running back room is concerned but uh i i just here, here's the thing i'm not a big fan of the Edo smith signing i don't think it's that big of a deal i'm kind of indifferent on it but i i just don't the todd Gurley thing i think he's just done i think he's he hasn't rushed for over four yards of carry since 2018 and he had nearly 200 carries for less than 700 yards last year he just hasn't been able to you know get into open space and get out there i don't think he's a good fit for cliff kingsbury's offense he was a guy just like Kenyon drake who didn't rush for a thousand yards but found double digit touchdowns i think it's just he's if you didn't you weren't exactly pumped about Kenyon drake as the as the running back mm -hmm. i don't think you're gonna like todd Gurley even more so we're getting close to the regular season starting. That's why. I mean, it's not like we're in the middle of. I mean, it's and it's it's funny how we've talked about this. We recognize the fact that the third round would have been the perfect time to draft a running back, but they traded for Rodney Hudson to help the running back room and Kyler Murray. So it's kind of a double edged sword where you got the protection, but you don't necessarily have the talent that the protect that the protection is supposed to protect. Uh, obviously, it was still the right move trading for Rodney Hudson. There's no question about it. But them trading up to get Marco Wilson instead of drafting a running back in the fourth round, like you just show us how many other needs. And yeah, this running back room, if Chase Edmonds doesn't work, this could be the Josh Allen show in Arizona. Like Josh Allen had last year where they just didn't run the ball at all. Like when Zach Moss was healthy, sure. short yardage and stuff, but they didn't run the ball really at all. So we could see that a lot. And you don't want Kyler Murray dropping the dropping back 50 times a game. Yeah. Well, you, you know, that's an interesting debate because I've seen a lot of it. Uh, I read just an article about how Cliff Kingsbury needs to kind of usher in, you know, this modern day NFL offense where they're throwing the ball a lot more than they have the last two seasons. Maybe we'll get into that conversation tomorrow. Uh, you've got also 
was it Mike Clay that released the uh, the roster grades? We'll yeah, get we'll into do that, that tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we'll get into that as well as uh, our guy Jared pointing out that the Arizona Cardinals, the odds of them winning the division, they're long shots. Is it a smart bet? We'll get into that conversation as well. On Tuesday's edition of Locked On Cardinals, Bo Brock, Alex Clancy, follow along on Twitter at Locked On AZ Cards, at B O B R A C K, at Clancy's Corner. Continue to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you so much. And uh, hit that like button. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a great rest of your Monday.